Let's now see how to apply Black Scholes Merton pricing to options on exchange rates, currency options in general. I'm going to look at the call option on the exchange rate, which is denoted capital R for rate. It's a random process, and uh, for example, R at capital T is the amount in dollars, if that's the domestic currency, uh, of one unit of foreign currency. Okay? It's a domestic value of one unit of foreign currency, therefore the exchange rate uh, at time capital T, the maturity of the option. Okay? And we want to find the price, this, price of this in domestic currency. We are going to assume that the exchange rate process follows the black scholes merton model, a geometric Brownian motion, and therefore it's given in terms of its dynamics as dr is r mu r dt plus sigma r dw of t. Now this is actually not the best usually model for exchange rates. Exchange rates are really different from stocks. Stocks uh, tend to go up over time, uh, historically, on average. Um, not the exchange rates, right? They fluctuate uh, up and down and don't really have a necessarily an uptrend or, or a downtrend. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I'm going to use this model because that's what we are working with now and we can get uh, form benchmark formulas for, uh, for currency options. So the claim is that the same as for a forward contract on currencies, uh, on an exchange rate, the, the, the same formula will hold as for a dividend paying stock, except instead of the dividend rate, we are going to plug in the interest rate of the foreign, uh, the risk-free rate of the foreign bank account uh, denoted by R subscript F. Okay? Uh, that's exactly what we did with forward contracts and the argument is uh, we have to do the same thing here in the option pricing formula. Okay, except in the forward contracts it's a, it was a no arbitrage argument and no matter what the model is here it's going to be specific to the Black Scholes uh, model, to this model. So let's, let's see why that is the case, why we can do that. Again, the intuition is the same as before. The intuition is uh, the, it's really the uh, foreign currency for a domestic investor is a risky asset, but it's a risky asset which pays dividends. What are the dividends? The dividends uh, is the interest that the, that the bank account pays you, the foreign bank account pays you. Okay, so we are going to have two assets to trade in, the domestic bank and the foreign bank, or the risk-free accounts. And I want to switch everything to dollars. So I'm going to look at the one unit in the foreign bank account, which after time t gives me e to the r f times t units of the foreign currency. But I'm going to switch, I'm going to transfer that into dollars by multiplying by r of t. Okay, I want the dollar value, the domestic value of the foreign bank account. I'm going to call that r star. Okay, so this is this product. And uh, I will need the dynamics of that, so I'll just do Ito's rule, the r star. So this is a simple product where the second term in the product doesn't actually have a Brownian motion in it, so it's simple produ product differentiation and as we saw before when you're multiplying by exponential uh, what happens is you just add the exponent here dt, so rf dt and then, and, and then it will be r times the exponential everywhere else which is r star. Okay, so you can do yourself if you want in detail the Eta's rule on this but by now we maybe already have a feeling what happens, you just add rf here. Okay, before we were discounting so it was minus r, but now we, we are inflating so it's plus rf here. Okay, so that's the dynamics of r star, which is the dollar value of the, risk of the foreign bank account. Why do I need this? Because I want to write down the wealth dynamics and see what my, pri what my pricing probability Q is. So the wealth dynamics uh, is going to be 
similarly as before, I'm going to denote by pi the amounts in domestic currency in the foreign bank. Uh, so, uh, but pi is in, in dollars. Everything is going to be computed in dollars. Okay, and so we are going to invest pi in the foreign bank and uh, x minus pi, where x is your total value, in the domestic bank. So this first term is the same as before. It's just x minus pi is the amount in the domestic bank over the value of the bank, the num number of units, number of shares in the bank, if you want, times the change in the bank account. Plus, and this is the same as before, except instead of s, I'm writing r star. So pi over r star, number of shares, number of units of the foreign in the foreign bank account times the r star change in the foreign bank account. Okay, and just replace db by rdt. You replace, so r is the domestic rate. Uh, you replace the r star over r star from here by mu r plus rf dt plus sigma r dw, and you get this. And this is exactly the same as for a stock paying dividends when investing in a, in a stock paying dividends, except instead of the dividend rate, which we call small q, here we have RF, the foreign bank interest rate. Okay, and therefore, exactly the same as with the dividends, the Brownian motion under the pricing probability Q is going to look like this, where again, instead of the dividend rate which we had here before, we now have RF, the foreign interest rate. Uh, again, why is this? Uh, just to remind you, so this was because if you if you look at uh, dw from here and dw is going to be dwq minus mu q minus r plus rf over sigma uh, dt so if i if i plug in instead of dw this thing in red down here i plug it back in here then uh, uh, sigma and sigma will cancel. It's sigma r here. Okay, it's sigma r. Sigma r will cancel. Uh, r will cancel. Rf will cancel. Mu, this should have been mu r. Uh, mu r will cancel, uh, and you will get rx plus something dw. So when you discount, you will have a martingale. Okay, and all of this will cancel, and here you just have rx. When you discount, you will have a martingale because it will become zero, uh, and that's exactly what we want. So that's why the WQ, WQ has to be like this, because under such Q, discounted wealth, the discounted wealth process is a martingale, and that's what we want. Okay, so uh, that's that. Again, this was mu r, and this was sigma r here. Fine. Now, when I know that. Well, uh, then I can just use the same logic as with the dividends. Uh, I, I know I just have to add this extra RF term into my pricing formulas. And so here I'm just repeating the same formula we had on a stock when, uh, when uh, there are dividends. Um, instead of, the, of S for the stock, I use R for the exchange rate. Uh, and then everything else looks like black shows, but with dividends. So instead of small q, which was the dividend rate, I have RF, which is the interest rate of the foreign account. Okay? Otherwise, the formula is the same uh, as for the dividends. Okay, so we now know in the black shows merton model how to price a call option on a unit of foreign currency. Uh, because that was really, uh, you know, that was really an option to buy a unit of foreign currency. Why? Because you, you, you pay K uh, if the exchange rate at that time is higher than K, you are happy to pay K to buy, let's say, one euro instead of buying the market price, which at that time is R of capital T. Right? So you can think of this as an uh, call option on an exchange rate or, or a call option on a one unit of foreign currency. It's the same thing.